Live. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Alex here again from the Festival of Enterprise. I'm going to be hosting uh, today's live webinar. Today's 12 p.m. I'm joined by Tudor Mihalesco, who is the CEO and co-founder of Speechify. So they are a tech company on a mission to help people talk about what they love on social media. So just to give you a little bit of an intro, Tudor, um, I met for the first time last October, November, I'm trying to think what month it was. November. Yeah, November, yeah. Yeah, so you uh, you just come through um, the uh, program with Antler, the uh, global startup generator and um, early stage VC, and um, of which I'm proud to be an advisor for. And I was over in um, Amsterdam in Holland where, where you are live now, um, watching you on stage, um, speaking to hundreds of investors that were there, um, as well as Magnus Grimmeland and the uh, founder who I had on uh, last week on this show as well. Um, so yeah, tell, tell us a little bit about um, Speechify and what's happened. Uh, tell us first of all a little bit more about what Speechify does and, and what's happened to you guys since um, since that moment back in November. So we're kind of what, just about six months since then, yeah. It feels like a different lifetime. <laughs> I know. Well, it is, isn't it, with coronavirus and COVID-19 and yeah. Um, uh, thanks, Alex. It, it's it's actually really exciting to uh, to be on the webinar with you. I've I've told you this before. I really appreciate the way you the you you moderate these these chats. And actually, the first uh, the podcast we did together then in Amsterdam was the first time that we ever did a podcast as Speechify. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> it's a really cool we did a podcast for for, uh, for my screw it just do it podcast. I, I completely forgot to mention that, but yeah, that was that was great. <laughs> so it's um, it was the first time we actually spoke publicly about what we do, um, and uh, it's I'm very grateful for that. I'm excited to to be uh, to be with you on a webinar this time, also video for the first time. Um, yeah, it's been so. Things move fast in the startup world anyway. So six months is usually a lifetime. Uh, yeah. Us in our team joke these days that actually the entire world right now moves as fast as our world used to move up until this point. Mm -hmm. So things are still moving super quickly. Um, the story of Speechify uh, starts a year ago. Uh, when I had just finished my PhD in how American presidents write their speeches, and I was thinking how a technology could actually empower regular people and give them a voice. Um, this is based a lot on my own experience. Uh, I'm a left-handed who is forced to write with his right hand. So when I was growing up, I felt this frustration of having ideas, uh, but not, not being able to express themselves, express them properly in writing. Mm -hmm. And I know there's many people who feel that way on social media these days. They have the ideas, but they don't get to express them, to share them with their friends for various reasons. Because they don't have the time or because they, they're anxious about putting them in writing or both or many other reasons in between. Uh, so we, Speechify, wants to help regular people speak on social media about what they love, whether it's their favorite, favorite product or service, or favorite organization or political cause. Um, and the mission we have is basically empowering all of these amazing organizations who take care of their community members or service their customers well, to actually empower these people to speak about what they do, uh, rather than having to pay for advertising. And uh, when we, we first started speaking about this podcast, I thought it was uh, a really great chance for us to speak right now because we've seen so many organizations these days slash their advertising or marketing budgets because they're trying to cut costs yeah uh, but it's okay to want to cut costs but i do think that at this point in time we're all falling back on who loves us the most right when you're in 
families, right? I've seen, I've heard people, and I do it myself. I speak much more to my family members than I would do a few weeks ago because we're falling back on the people who are closest to us in hard times. Uh, it's the same thing with companies. At this moment in time, it's the right time for all companies to actually fall back on their own customers who love them and tell them, hey, spread the word to your friends about our amazing products and services. And this is a way we can actually break through that noise and get to the people who actually need our product. Uh, and that's that's what Speechify can, uh, can help companies do. Yeah, we were talking about that offline, weren't you? And uh, the, the two of us saying, um, so many companies, you know, I've experienced this personally as a, as a business owner of a podcast agency as well, that companies are just canceling their marketing or, you know, furloughing great reams of people in their organization and, and just keeping to the bare minimum of staff. Like a client of mine is a, is a zoo, um, biggest zoo in Western Europe, and they have literally had to furlough all their staff. Um, you know, their monthly bills are, you know, half a million pounds a, a month. So they've just kept it for like the zookeepers to live on site with the animals and look after the animals. Um, but, you know, all the other departments uh, have been furloughed. So there is no marketing department to, to speak to. And I, you know, for me, it was like, you know, what can you keep doing at the moment so that, you know, when things change and they will change, that you are then at the forefront of, of people's minds. You've kept the conversation going. You've kept telling stories. Uh, whereas if you just shut everything down, you 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 you're going to be starting almost from scratch again aren't you it's just you know it's momentum isn't it like anything in life you know once you start pushing that that boulder down the hill it just it, it travels at great speed by the time it reaches the bottom whereas you know trying to do that again you're pushing the whole thing up uphill again it's tough exactly and it i mean it also depends on the market like so yeah I, it's a great opportunity. So we spent the last 10 years building online tools that will help people congregate offline. In the last month, we've reversed that entire thing. We've scrambled to build tools that keep people online. Right. Uh, so I think it's actually the organize the companies who right now are producing products that can help people need to step up and make sure that their customers know that they exist. Yeah. We haven't stopped consuming. Actually, uh, Amazon has hired 100,000 people in the last few weeks wow. in the US Yeah. <laughs> because they know they need to step up. People keep, still keep consuming. Yeah, uh, same as with the supermarkets, isn't it? I know in the UK, they're employing again, tens of thousands of people, yeah. So it's the economy is still running. It's just changing the way it operates. Uh, and uh, people need to understand that. And rather than waiting for the crisis to happen, to actually start adapting as soon as possible to what some people refer to as the new normal and actually try to make the most of it for them and for their businesses and try to adapt to people's shifting needs because people's needs are still there. They're just shifting. We need to go uh, also shift our offerings to, to their needs. Yeah, I had a chat called James Sinclair on yesterday and he was saying how he's started a new business like in the last 10 days and he's just opened a, a drive through supermarket, like click and collect, order your goods online, drive in, staff will come out, fill your boot and you drive off. You don't have to get out of the car. And I was like that. I, I like that idea. Somebody doing something like that in, in, in times like this. Um, and also something we mentioned earlier when, when I hosted Magnus on here, um, a couple of weeks ago and again I, I strongly advise everybody on today to go back and re-watch that webinar with with magnus grimalan from antler um because it was brilliant and he was saying uh, you know at this time people seem so scared of selling and you know something that you just alluded to there and you know it's so important i think to tell people you know if you're just like you are with with your business student if you are solving people's problems you are providing a product or a service that is solving somebody's problem you need to tell people about it you need to tell as many people about it as possible because you will look back at this time in life and kick yourself if you didn't if you weren't there to be able to help people um you know and I, i'm as guilty as this as, as the next person and, and you know it's that fine line at this time I'm thinking what well, is it um 
you know, is it the done thing? Is it socially acceptable to be selling? And it's like, there's so many different ways to sell. You know, for me, it's, you know, being able just to, to tell your story um, about, you know, who you are, what you do, what you can provide to people. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, I look at it in terms of needs and solutions to those needs. If, yeah. if you're a business that has a solution to a big need that people have right now, yes, you need to reach out to as many people as possible to make sure that the people who have that need will know that you exist. Yeah, 100%. And, and it's even more than that. With so many traditional industries that are going down, and as Magnus was saying, it's the responsibility of the companies that can solve needs right now to step up because we are we're carrying the world's GDP on our shoulders. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, so and, and, you know, and op opportunities. I think I was just talking about this on, a, on a, another webinar with somebody in Australia earlier, and I was, I was saying, you know, even if you you can't see the opportunities right now, you know, open your open your ears, open your eyes. They will be coming thick and fast, and 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 I mean that in the most positive way. You know, opportunities to impact people, to help people, not in a in a negative way um at all i know i ioana has posted up in here saying that you know she's taking taking courses online uh, and i you know i say that to everybody again you know if you are in a situation where you're furloughed or you're, you're not working you'd be made unemployed you know there's so many free courses on there i mean i started one up you know free a group to, to teach people how to podcast you know using just what's on you know one of these or on, on your laptop you know it, it can be done you know start your own podcast um with my podpreneur group and I had a guy on here who um, founded the company Allison, which is, I think, you know, one of the world's biggest marketplaces for online courses, and they're all free. So definitely, you know, time for upskilling, um, without 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 a doubt. Um, great. So okay. So Tudor, um, tell us a little bit more about Speechify, and maybe tell us what you're going to do um, with the, with the time remaining we we have on on here today. Sure. So I, I wanted to actually show you how it works so that the people who are watching us actually have a practical example of it. And if there's any questions about how it could be used uh, uh, for uh, businesses, I'd love to answer those. Or if there's any other tips that I can provide, I'm happy to do so. Uh, I think I'm here to make sure that we give as much as possible to our listeners and our viewers. Uh, so I would also be looking forward to their questions. Yeah, hundred percent. So, any, everybody, um, Tudor will run through now. But um, any questions, just post them up. You know, questions on um, things that we've talked about already. Questions um, in your mind uh, at the moment as to how you can communicate with your existing customers better. Um, let us know what you're doing, what kind of things you you are doing to communicate with those people. Um, and again, I'm I'm more than happy to um, connect with anybody online after we finish this as well so i'll post up my linkedin profile but happy to carry on the conversation and again um anything that you've, you've got for tudor post up as well and we can pass on afterwards so um i will so share your screen tudor. Uh, can you see it already yeah okay awesome so most of the companies who work in the fast moving consumer goods or even fashion or fintech have already at least known of referral marketing programs. The way referral marketing programs works is you're incentivizing your current customers to refer their friends for your product and you give them incentives for that. The way it works up until this point is you give them this unique referral link that they need to copy paste manually and actually add words to that, right? And share it with their friends and encourage them to, to, uh, to use it. Most of the times, people don't have the time to actually come up with what they want to say to their friends, or they don't know how to do that on social media. They don't know how to write. They don't know how to post it. They don't want to sound salesy, uh, even though they're personally getting taking a lot of value out of that service. So what we've created is a system that does that for people. We help regular people write social media posts about the things they love. Uh, with input from those companies in in some ways we're uh, we're helping every regular person to become the biggest advocates for the the products they love 
which I've seen already happens. I've seen I've seen a lot of customers rally around the uh, the products they love. I've seen uh, people all over the world uh, starting to uh, do uh, to take take home deliveries from their favorite restaurants to keep them in business. So if you are a company that has a passionate community base, a passionate uh, number of customers, you can reach out to them and ask them to help you spread the word. Um, and this is how it happens. Um, one way to do referral marketing is through an email campaign. And I'm just showing you here an example from one of our current clients, Alloy Card, um, that sends emails to their community members, uh, customers asking them to sign up for the card. And Rather than having a link that people need to co copy and paste manually, they just have a simple call to action, which is share with friends. When you click on it, it takes you to the Speechify page. This is a unique page that every customer has. See, so you have your unique identifier here at the top. Uh, once you land here, you choose the social network you wanna share on, and you see, well-written ready-made posts for you. A few options because the company wants to make sure they capture the experience that you've had in using their product. So you have a text, you have a hashtag, you have an image and the link, your own referral link is embedded to it. Um, let's say you don't like any of these. Uh, you can either custom uh, click here and customize and share or you can build your own post based on building blocks. It's like a jigsaw puzzle that you put together. And then you click customize and share. It takes you to your social network and you can post it easily. This is how it works. Um, you can do it on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, but you can also do it through, um, uh, through direct messages, whether those are on WhatsApp or on, uh, on Facebook Messenger or iMessage or whatever, whatever you may choose to use. And actually, Festival of Enterprise is one of our clients, so I wanted to also take you through how, how that works. Um, so Festival of Enterprise is now doing a campaign with us to encourage people who sign up for the webinar to actually share it with their friends. And this is what their uh, um, dashboard looks like. So you create a campaign and then uh, you can create the content through it yourself. Um, so I'll show you how that works. You put in the ready-made posts here uh, where you write the text, you put in the image, you add the hashtags and the link, and then you click on save post. Uh, you can tot completely customize your landing page image as well, which is this one. See a really beautiful picture with a welcome message and uh, uh, put in the right social media networks. And then, for instance, uh, this one is shared through um, LinkedIn. Please click on customize and share. I go to LinkedIn and... can share it in a post or share it in a private message. So okay. I'll share that in a private message with you, Alex. Okay. Uh, here you go. I can customize it. I click send. And in just a couple of seconds, I've actually sent a personalized message to you. Got it. Asking you to join the, the Festival of Enterprise webinar. Yeah, got it. Um, so um, this is part of it. Um, the really interesting things are that what we can also track. And I'll show you an example. Uh, this is actually an example from one of our clients. You don't see the name of the client here, obviously, but you can see the stats. So what happens at scale with this? See, we've had this particular client in the last week has had 
close to 1300 users who landed on that page and a thousand of them actually shared the message through our uh, through our app uh that's wow. a point seventy five percent conversion that's huge yeah um, most referral marketing platforms that don't have this option to help the share create the content uh range between point zero two and point two wow. we're, uh, we're uh, tripling or even quadrupling that um we tell you everything. We tell you the number of shares. We tell you the number of clicks. You have time series as well. And uh, we're also telling you the sharing behavior, the clicking behavior, and the geographics, uh, the share uh, per user ratio on every platform, what content gets shared the most, what content gets clicked the most, what geographics the users come from as well. Um, and I wanted to show you uh, some s interesting stats. So. In the last six months uh, since we created, uh, uh, since we launched the, uh, the, the full Speechify platform, we've had users from 180 countries uh, who created more than 40,000 posts through us. And uh, that generated over a billion, uh, amplified key hashtags to over a billion impressions. Uh, in pro product marketing itself, these are the metrics we sh see. So, We've consistently seen that for every user that lands on our page, uh, the, uh, the companies ha generate an estimated value of at least $7. So this is the, the kind of, uh, this is the kind of mentality shift that I think needs to happen, where organizations understand that their own customers can actually be their best source of advertising. Mm. And I wanted to show you what this looks like online. Um, this is one of our clients. Uh, it's, it's Civic Technologies. They actually, they're launching a new wallet uh, that will allow users to have all of their identity elements in one place. And these are re regular people who are posting through Speechify daily about, uh, about uh, Civic on social media. There's thousands of posts. Hmm. So you're basically, you're basically making your customers come together as a movement to back your product, which can happen publicly, but also privately. Um, there's another interesting use case for what we do, and I'll actually show you our own website for that. Uh, we're preparing to put this new version uh, on today uh, and so so many people um you know it's that thing isn't it about um what it costs to acquire a new customer compared uh -huh. to keeping the the current customers you've got happy yeah um, and this is clearly you're, you're turning you're essentially turning those customers into your your biggest fans exactly yeah so we've had a client who in the last two months generated more than six thousand clicks through us just to the power of their own network uh and those clicks are well used because uh we've already studies and we have a few figures here for instance see 84 percent of people trust recommendations from their friends and family over any other form of marketing mm. uh we've we've in the last few years, we've heard so many stats around this, but there was no easy way to actually turn regular people into influencers for your brand. Uh, we're, we're helping companies do that. Okay. And I was just about to show you another side of what we do, um, where another product we have, which is uh, linked to, to the first one is basically uh, we're supercharging the, the, the sharing functionalities on people's websites. This is actually uh, from our own website, Speechify. You know, in the past you'd have, and I mean, in the present, but for, for us, it's already the past. Um, you have those little cute icons on websites and you click on it and you see a blank page where you need to write your own message. Uh, whereas, every time someone finds um, an, some interesting content on your website, they can share it easily. For instance, the way we use it for our own website, 
when people land on our website, we want them to be able to share easily with their friends about what Speechify does. See, and uh, we have three messages here uh, that are customizable for uh, every platform, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And people can easily share with their friends, either publicly or privately about that. Oh, for instance. Very cool, very cool. Share this one. And it takes you to Facebook. And rather than having that blank screen, you have mm. a well-written message. And when you post it, the entire message sends out with the picture itself. And you've got, have you got hashtags in there I just saw, is that right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and you right. can, you can, uh, you can make sure you can customize those as you wish. Now, the really exciting thing is that obviously, as you've seen in our name, we're called Speechify with AI. So what we do is we actually, uh, we take into account everything that people do on our website. So what they share, what they click and what they convert on, the, uh, on our client's website. And we then advise our clients what kind of content they should use uh, and what kind of texts they should use to, to make the most of that behavior. If your KPI is clicks, uh, then we will advise. Oh, just for your messages. Uh, to, 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 uh screens just f uh waiting for tudor to reconnect okay so that's at 27 minutes um let me post mine back up okay guys uh apologies just lost tudor um just waiting for him to reconnect uh this is technical issue that's been happening a lot on all different um webinar platforms at the moment uh due to the bandwidth i think being uh taken up by everybody being online um let me just uh re-invite tudor back up onto uh screen and um yeah get him get him back up there he is i'm just going to invite him back on um from amsterdam in holland and hopefully he gets that one uh pretty quickly i think i'm back on you're back yeah just yeah. you just, just lost you for a literally one or two minutes there um as i say keeps happening on all of these platforms at the moment um that's one of the problems with <laughs> with online work right you need to rely on the internet connection and sometimes it's absolutely uh, i've got a question uh, a couple of questions that have popped up while you've been away um so uh, yeah, it's a question asking yeah, what kind of price range could somebody expect? Um, it's from entry level upwards, I guess is probably the easiest way to be able to communicate with their existing customers through a referral type scheme like you're talking about here. So uh, we're working with B two B right now, which means we tailor our offers to the size of the the customer. Uh, let me put it this way: we've worked with startups who've just begun. Yeah, uh, we've worked with um high level clients who have budgets of millions and with middle clients as well so it's uh we have uh, our offer can be tailored to to any customer uh so i would encourage I would encourage the viewers is to reach out to to me and to us and we'll we'll find an offer that suits them yeah absolutely um any a couple of uh, specific questions here that you may or may not be, be able to answer but we'll, we'll post, put them up here otherwise and maybe you can they can contact you directly otherwise and, and you, you can come up with a few ideas but magdalena any other marketing ideas for financial institutions on how to get new customers um what i've seen um we've been working with a few 
both in cryptocurrency and traditional uh, uh, traditional fintech. Um, obviously, this depends a lot on your use case itself. Uh, what I've realized is that if you manage to understand the conundrum in which people are now and their immediate needs and tailor your, your marketing message to that, uh, then you can actually get uh, get people more quickly to to start using you immediately. Uh, I've seen it these days, and we've received these signals from our clients. People these days are interested in financial security, making sure that their money is safe during the crisis, making yeah. sure that they have the right advice uh, on how to spend their money uh, or how to use their money and where to put their money. So I think be listening to their needs and showing that you're actually trying to meet their needs now, not a month ago. Yeah. Because like, their people's needs today are totally different than they were a month ago. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Uh, so I think, yeah, if you're... Con I think people should... Financial institutions and fintech pro platforms should continue to reach out to their current clients and new clients, but make sure they show they listen to the, what their current needs are. Rather than continuing on, yeah, this is a phase, this will pass away, so we'll just do our regular stuff. This shows to your clients that you're tone deaf to them. Mm -hmm. And you don't actually understand what they're going through right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think that's the biggest challenge. And if you sh prove that you listen, people will be, um, people will come to you and will appreciate you even more. A uh, couple of other ones coming in. So uh, Alicia says, um, any marketing ideas for charities looking to increase donations at this time? And funnily enough, I've mentioned the zoo before that was one of my clients and I saw they're putting out, you know, in their social media uh, that they're looking for donations uh, at this time as well. So uh, that's smack on there as well. Yeah. That's one. I, I do want to go back to Magdalena first because she's uh, written. Oh, yeah. Exactly. That yeah. So Magdalena, we're actually now starting to work with a new client that works in the same space. So they're doing currency transfers from Western Europe to Eastern Europe. Uh, one of their concerns were these, uh, how can we make sure that people, because most people up until this point would transfer their money to uh, Western Union. So they would go to a, a, an actual bank or uh, office and they would give the money and the money would be transferred. I've realized that it's, they and they were telling us that their biggest need right now is to educate their clients that they can do this online as well, as safely yeah. as they used to do it at that physical office. Uh, so it's the same thing, right? Understanding that their needs right now are probably information. Hey, you're as safe doing it this way. It actually arrives easier and it's smooth. Uh, yes, Magdalena, hey, I think everyone who works in the fintech space doing currency transfers and transfers between different countries and remittances hates Western Union. So <laughs> I think that's spot on. Yeah. Um, Thank you. So, uh, Alicia. Um, yeah. Yes. We're actually we're actually working with charities on donations campaigns. Um, so here, I think what's important is it's again for us with the clients we've been working with, we've realized it was ease of use. Uh, people don't need to log in through us to actually uh, to actually share the content. Uh, so they just take the content from us and they share it to their friends however they want. Uh, I think it's, I was listening to a podcast a couple of days ago um, that was looking at the donations market and they were, they were talking about the latest financial, the, the 2008 financial crisis. And what they've had realized is that they saw two interesting trends. One of them was that the, the sums donated decreased but the number of people donated increased during the 2008 financial crisis. And the reason for that is because people feel the need to give back. 
Mm-hmm. They may not be able to afford as much, but if you manage to find the right motivation to get people to donate and you explain to them how their money is used and how it fits into a, the bigger picture, uh, they can actually, um, they will do it. I, I saw an interesting one um, in relation to my point about the zoo. And then I saw another zoo uh, post up and it, it made the news and it was I think, on the BBC News saying that this this other zoo, Marwell Zoo down in Hampshire here in, in the UK, had um, on one day had received more views of its live stream than at any other time in its entire like 55 year you know history or whatever and i was saying there you go that's a great way to leverage the technology that we got do more live streams of you know different animals look at the data maybe and see which <laughs> animals are getting exactly the yeah. news um and you could tailor some campaigns around that about you know going back to your existing benefactors your your the, the people who currently donate and trying to work out you know which, which bu- buttons to press essentially to exactly. uh you know and related to this we've done a campaign a few weeks ago for a vote by mail in the us right and so our the organization who was using us had some serious messages and some of them with literally kittens really Uh, so the, the serious ones were like we should vote by mail because of this and this political reason and stuff the other ones were (laughs) <laughs> literally it said like this <laughs> vote home vote naked and with a with a kitten <laughs> so what the organization saw is that the most shared images through us were the ones with serious messages but the ones that were getting most clicks were actually the ones with the kittens yeah yeah uh and the reason why this is interesting is because in this time people respond to different signals and it's a, it's a matter of figuring out what people need the most. Uh, this example actually reminded me uh, about when, when I was in the UK a few years ago, uh, around exam times, universities would have a pat the dog day where all students would line up to pat some really cute fluffy dogs. <laughs> really? And, but, and, but that's because what that's what people need you'd think that people in exam times may need i don't know like uh uh some more help with tutoring but some people yeah, yeah, yeah. it makes them feel good if they pat a pet that's the only thing they need yeah uh so yeah. it's just <laughs> I see alicia saying need to get some kittens yeah they're they're free puppies yeah <laughs> yeah that's what so i was gonna that's say to my dude you know like yeah focus on um but, you know, focus on those animals that you're getting the most views, the most clicks from, without a doubt. It's interesting. Uh, a couple of other ones. So so there's a couple from uh, MS there who says, hi, everybody, representing a translation language solutions company. We've seen a drop in demand for language solutions across most verticals. We're now looking to keep our brand awareness up without the sales messaging while things are in a limbo is that a good idea do you think how would you best sow the seeds now to reap the rewards later on i mean i think you can reap the rewards today yeah agree uh, i've yeah. seen there's so many people i'm really surprised about this one actually because i've seen so many people on instagram and facebook saying that they're starting to pick up new languages my flatmate actually she started learning french a couple of days ago because she was like i have some more time i've always wanted to learn the new language yeah me too i've seen other people posting about that yeah languages Uh, so i mean if Mm. if you are our client i would actually encourage you to use your existing customer and come up with a product tailored to that say hey for people who are sitting at home now and want to pick up a, a, a new language quickly this is what we're offering which could be a slight adaptation to your current product yeah very slight and then use your own customers right now for them to share that with their friends and say hey i know you've been trying to pick up on a new language the service that i had already been using is now offering these options to all of these people stuck in their homes for the next few months and not knowing what to do yeah yeah Um, absolutely yeah because i I agree with you because quite often is the case you've got the um existing products or services and it just needs a small tweak 
based on what people need right now, you can actually adapt the existing products or services that you've got. Um, and the best way I, I, for me, it's, you know, communicating with the customers you've got now, finding out, you know, asking them what problems have they got right now and then finding solutions. Can you tailor an existing offer you've already got? Or if not, are you connected with a partner that you could point them in the direction to? Because then you're still seeing being seen as the provider of those solutions and being held in that kind of esteem, you know, by those people. Um, okay, so what else have we got here? Chris, uh, any, any, hi gents, any ideas to help a UK specialist timber frame construction company come out of this stronger? Um, I'm, I'm not sure I understand what, what it means. The timber timber frame construction. So I'm wondering, do you build? Um, are you do you build houses? Do you build garden offices? Um, those kinds of multi-purpose um, rooms that you can use in your garden. Um, maybe it's those kinds of. Uh, Chris, we build uh, build homes. There you go for the self-build market. I. I have I've never worked in this industry, so I'll be completely honest. Um, yeah. What I've what I've realized. So there was um, grand design type homes. Okay, cool. Yeah, just watching that the other night with my daughter, who's getting into grand design. She's only eleven, which can surprised you, me. But she's addicted you, to it now. Can you explain <laughs> what it, what is that exactly? Grand design. So um, people, you know, have these dreams of these houses that they want to construct, and they're usually absolutely, you know, amazing. <laughs> um in you know beautiful spots and they just follow them through the whole journey as to um what they want to um what they want to build what the vision is is it you know the build a year away is it is it further but it's is it a really entertaining tv program but uh, it's quite quite often high end i'd imagine um chris for people who are looking to, to self-build um i think is it trying to trying to trying to um tap into that network of people who you've already have as customers um who are looking to any any people that they can refer to you who, who are looking to do the same thing um so we've, we're actually we've started uh uh a, a discussion with uh, another platform in the last few days was actually for for real estate and what they were telling us is that they've actually real they've actually received more requests for people who are thinking about buying a new house once mm -hmm. this is over uh because they have more time to research now i think it's a matter of finding that sweet spot maybe if people cannot build right now they can at least think of the design uh, I think it's it's a matter of figuring out what what people can do today. Yeah, can you get people in your funnel today, like like you? Because I'm I'm thinking I've just looked at the website as well there, Chris, and I'm thinking exactly so. People, a friend of mine who's an estate agent had posted last night, going, "I'm genuinely interested to know: Do the general public think that the property market is going to crash and burn, or do they think it's going to you know take off?" And so many people were actually posting in there that they think it's going to take off off the back of this because people are at home even if you're still working at home you're saving time if you're not commuting you know you're gaining is it just an hour a day whatever you're gaining time um and you're thinking about things a lot of people i think chris are re myself included are re-envisaging their lives at this time you know not just their working lives but you know and, and for me it was as simple as do i want a massive agency with it with 100 people in my podcast agency or do i want a lifestyle brand instead where i just keep it like a boutique agency like i have at the moment i've got like five people who work for me um do i want to keep it like that so it's more about lifestyle i think clearly the business that you're in is is selling lifestyle is selling dreams to people so can you get people interested now so that when things do come up the other side so you're already getting them thinking about designing their ideal their grand design, their ideal home. Do you, do you think the same, Cheetah? Uh, yeah, I think people have a lot of time to dream right now and, yeah. and plan. Yeah, and plan. Because they yeah. cannot act. 
if you come in like so one idea could be rather than trying to sell to them now you'd put them on a specific wait list even though you could sell to them now you'd put them on a wait list and say i don't want to sell to you now immediately but would you want to join this wait list about what you could do when this is over or in the next phase of it right mm -hmm. so people can have the time to actually think about that idea so that it, the, it it sits with them for a while and you build it you build the drum beat in stages um i think if if people listeners have time i would totally recommend the latest masters or scale podcast with brian chesney from uh from airbnb that's a good podcast i like that podcast masters of scale yeah Late and, master reed, reed hoffman uh yes yeah but yeah. this one the reason why it's so cool is because airbnb has been one of the hardest hit tech companies in the world. Yeah. And the way they're thinking about it, they're already thinking of how the behavior of the of their user will change. So they're thinking, okay, at the beginning, they'll want to take small trips in their same state. For instance, going to places that are recluse for 10 days. Actually, one of my friends is now who lives in Dallas is taking a, a trip to a very remote place in the mountains for 10 days to just sit in the nature. So things still happen. It's a matter yeah. of understanding how the, the behavior of the user will change and how, how you can use your own mission. Airbnb's mission is connecting people. So how they will be able to actually make sure they connect people in this new normal. Uh, I think adaptation is so important. It is, and I was just, just looking at your website, Chris, like with the, the, the wonder tool that you've got, and I was thinking, you know, what can you do to get people um, to start down, downloading that, you know, focusing on that, so they've actually got something they can they can play around with. I'd, I'd be like like Judas said, I, I wouldn't be necessarily um, looking for those, you know, big numbers, big big sales at the moment, but you could be getting people, a lot of people in your funnel and nurturing them. So for, for me, I think I'd be looking to produce content as well at this time um to uh talk about the success stories that you've had to to keep reinforcing that kind of dream that people have that they want to build their dream home and if they, i think you know because like tudor says people have got so much time at the moment to plan to dream if you could start promoting that by um you know making content showing great examples of people who've achieved that dream at the moment giving them something they can play around with and plan as well i think that would um that could be a really good thing to be doing like right now to keep focused on. Um, and, what else have we got, uh, Magdalena? What kind of online? This is a good question. Very good question, Magdalena. Thank you for that. What kind of online marketing tools um, should I use for promotion, AdWords, social media, newsletters, etc.? Are best, or do you guys have something new? Well, as a, our own, our entire platform is that. So we're coming as an alternative to advertising. So you can generate clicks and conversions through us by basically turning your customers into your own advertisers. Rather than paying for advertiser, you can do it with us. Um, other than that, I think as far as I uh, understand in the advertising space, it, it's a matter of what works. For some people, Google works better than Facebook. Uh, for yeah. some people, uh, some people prefer um, a lot of uh, e email marketing campaigns, but you need to see what your conversion rate is. So I think it, it varies quite a bit. Uh, yeah. What are, uh, in terms of a philosophy, there's something that I that I find super interesting, and obviously it's uh, the core of us. Think of your own company as circles of trust. So you have maybe your investors. I, the, the way the way uh, the founder of Shake Shack has explained it, something I really uh, agree with is, you have your own you have your employees, then you have your customers, then you have your community. So there's all of these circles that are around your business that you can now leverage. Go back to the roots, fall back to the people who know your company the best, and ask them for help because if they love your uh, product, they will want to help. Yeah, and I, and I think um, so I've, I've covered this a few times in in, in webinars uh, over the last couple of weeks, and I think for me it, it comes back to um, who your customers are and where they hang out. So, like Tudor said, you know, are, are they hanging out 
on Facebook or are they hanging out on, on LinkedIn instead or Instagram? Um, and for me, it's, it's you know, it, it's it, and how do, when when do they um, consume that content? So normally would they consume that content when they're commuting, but now they're at home, for example, and they're spending more time on that particular platform. Um, and for me, I think it's, yeah, focusing on the content. Uh, you know, yes, I'm biased because I uh, talk podcasts, but, you know, whether it's a vlog, um, Chris Ducker was saying now, you know, chatting to, you know, there's a direct line with the guys at, you know, YouTube now, which is owned by Google. And they're saying by the end of this year, 85% of searches will be done through YouTube, which is insane. Absolutely insane. Um, so even though there are, you know, over a billion active users on YouTube, for me, like podcasts, there's only 850,000 podcasts out there. Blogs, there's over 20 million active blogs out there. So for me, I know where, where I choose, but what I'm saying, it, it, you know, tailor it to your audience. If your audience doesn't listen to podcasts, then you don't do, do, do a podcast. And, you know, biggest audience for podcasts is 18 to, to 28 year olds. 40% of 18 to 28 year olds consume podcasts. So, you know, I've been speaking to the military uh, who have a problem with um, recruitment and they can't recruit 18 to 28 year olds. I'm like, well, if you haven't got a podcast, then you're not speaking to your prime audience. You know, if you're still doing TV ads, how many 18 to 28 year olds watch normal TV at the moment? Nobody does, do they? Yeah. They watch YouTube TV instead or um, Amazon Prime. Yeah, exactly. I totally, I, I totally uh, understand and I agree with that too. Uh, yeah, you need to know your audience and listen. Like uh, this is a really great time to listen. Um, yeah, and yeah. related to this, if uh, I see Chris has written something else. I've had an idea for a small competition for customers, children. Design your crazy dream house with an Amazon toy voucher or maybe have it drawn up into a proper set of plans. I think that sounds great. Uh, obviously you need to flesh it out more and see how you how you develop it. But yeah, that sounds really cool. Uh, also related to this, uh, if there is people on this call who wanna brainstorm about their ideas, uh, I'm, I'm happy they can just reach out to us and either me or someone from, from our team will be happy to, uh, to have a chat. Uh, not necessarily about our own product, but also to give them ideas about, uh, about what they could do. Cool. Um, so some questions that come up through the, the separate tab there, just going to, just going to ask you, um, that you, you don't get to see. So, um, Tell us what happens. So what happened to you and your business um, after lockdown? So you're clearly trading. You're not mothballing. We we had this conversation offline anyway, but um, interested. Um, yeah, people interested to know what happened to you in Speechify after lockdown. Um, and yeah, what did, what did you do? Business as normal? Or <laughs> that that like the... so, okay, so let me put it this way. Uh, so because Alex, you were there when we pitched to those VC in October. Great after, time. After that, we had a few chats with some big investors. One of them said, I love your business, but I do not understand the way you are planning to grow your company. Because we had said from the very beginning, we're building a decentralized team. We want people to feel, to work where they feel comfortable from their own homes and want them to have that flexibility. And this, Investor said, no, I don't think that's ever going to work. I think you need to put people into an office so that they are there face to face all the time and you keep an eye on them. Hmm. Well, the world has changed since then. Just a bit. That, even, just a bit. that even just saying this out loud sounds funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it does. It does. Um, so the way the way we've uh, the way we've operated. I, I, I used to travel a lot uh, up until this point, right? So uh, when when the uh, when the lockdown happened, I was actually in New York. Uh, so I flew back to Amsterdam. I took a short trip to London for a day uh, to meet with uh, part of our team, and then I've been uh, in Amsterdam for the last month and a bit. The way I see it, I, I've been extremely grateful uh, because we have a company that can offer a solution to people's needs. Uh, I have a team that is super motivated and actually has a reason to wake up in the morning because they know we're we can help people. Um, 
I can reach easily, more easily now, everyone around the world without having to travel. And yeah. I'm still fortunate enough to go out for, for one kind of exercise a day. I have food on the table um, and, uh, and I, I, I'm safe. So I think, I think it's really important to look at the positives. Um, yeah. And to, to understand that we can make, we should make the most of what, what happens around us uh, and, and, and keep moving. 100%. Um, here's a question. What's keeping you up at night? Huh. Uh, I actually sleep really well. <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so know, what's but, keeping yeah. me up at night is that most of our customers are in the US and I actually have to stay up longer uh, until their work hours are over. I see. That's, uh, why, you say that. That's why you're working late. Yeah. <laughs> So, but okay, but I understand the I understand the core of the question. Um, we're, we're a small company, so this made us as vulnerable as others. Mm. Right? When immediately after this crisis happened, we had a few small investors who were looking to chip in uh, for for a bridge round that we were raising, and they 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 decided not to. Uh, However, right now we have a really great offer on the table that we're considering in the next few days. Uh, and the way I see it, so our impulse was in the next last month and a bit was, okay, we, cannot, we don't know whether we'll be able to raise immediately. So let's focus on bringing our sales up and our revenues up. Uh, every one of the, some of the best companies in the world have been started in crisis. Airbnb started at the height of the financial crisis in 2008. Uh, Netflix started really soon after. Uh, I think it's, it, you see it as a motivation to keep moving, to reorganize and to, to, to keep pushing. So, uh, yeah, great. Uh, I love what Chris has posted. I'm just going to share it with everybody else who's still on the, the webinar when he says, um, I've just had an idea for a small competition for customers' children. Design your crazy dream house, win an Amazon toy voucher, or maybe have it drawn up into a proper set of plans. Yeah, I mean, people love competitions. All you have to see at the moment is on social media, challenges, competitions. I've just got drawn into a, a couple of them, doing my 5K for the NHS uh, last night. Um, and I think that's a really clever angle is to get customers' children involved. I know my girls would be really interested in, in doing something like that. And I, I think if you involve the children as well, um, I think that's really clever. And, and, and to, to align it with, with a competition where somebody wins something on, on Amazon or even better than Amazon, is it a, a local business that you have as a partner that you can, you can leverage as well? You put, put uh, a whole bunch of different prizes together into some kind of dream prize, like you say, a proper set of plans. I think that gets the parents fully motivated, the prize, be the, the toy gets the children involved will be the ones badgering the parents to actually sit down at night and, and enter. I love it. I think it's really great lateral thinking. Yeah, Chris, and would love to help you with that, actually. Uh, I'd be happy to, to, to give you a one month free version of Speechify to actually test if that work, uh, that makes sense. So that awesome. you can use it and we'll help you also design the campaign for word of mouth if you want that uh if you want our help for it thank you judah appreciate it um here's one uh how will and this is your opinion obviously you don't have a crystal ball but how will consumer and business behavior change after the lockdown and, and covid 19 and obviously things are changing we're seeing european countries slowly open things up austria spain germany opening up bigger shops with um like uh, garden centers, things like that. Yeah, and, and I had a conversation with Australia before they're thinking they're opening the beaches up this weekend, apparently. So yeah, what, what, what do you think, Tudor? Uh, I think, I, I don't think there is one clear cutoff point, which is before and after the lockdown. I think it's more of a continuum, which is things are gradually shifting and moving back to normal, but I'm not sure what that normal exactly is. Uh, what I do know is that the entire digital transformation has accelerated. Yeah, uh, right. and if you're, this can be a motivation for businesses all over to actually 
finally transition to digital if they haven't already done it or double down on it if yeah. they are in that space. Uh, because I think it's dangerous to think it's going to go back to norm to what we consider to be normal. Absolutely. Uh, I, yeah. Planning that things will stay like this for a while, I, I think it's actually much wiser for any business. Mm. I'll give you I'll give you an example that my brother's a lawyer and he was saying his firm, which is still a substantial firm doing, you know, tens of millions of pounds in revenue. He's having to drive a three hour round trip to drop off his case files, pick up new case files and drive all the way back home and read the case files. Whereas other firms have, you know, digitized a decade ago, maybe. And he said, my firm still. And I said, well, there you go. That's your first suggestion for them. Get digitized, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's 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 fascinating how how much time is is wasted. Uh, I was actually looking at this video of uh, looking at the bright side of working from home, which is somewhat. I think this is especially valid in London when it takes you like one and one and a half hours to commute or even more. Like, yeah, to get to the other side of London, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. And you, you yeah. end up there and you're all flustered and sweaty and you haven't had your coffee in the morning, you haven't eaten yet. And you, just half of the days has already is, is spent on the road. Whereas if you wake up in the morning and you're at your own house, then you can do all of those things that you enjoy before starting to work. So it can actually be a stimulus for big companies to actually give their employees more flexibility as long as they get their work done. Yeah, it, it will be really interesting. What and again, one of my clients is um, is a flexible workspace, a big, big, the, the original flexible workspace. And they have contracts, you know, with all of the WeWorks, the Foras, all of these guys. And um, it will be interesting what happens in that space because so many people are, and I know people already said that to me, they're gonna to go to their employer and literally say, I like this working at home business. <laughs> Can I do, you know, Friday and Mondays at home and come into the office Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? It's, it's a conversation, isn't it? And uh, you know, what happens, you know, will be happened. But um, here's another question. We, we're, we're already past time, so I'll try and wrap up, but a couple of last questions for you. Um, What's this one that says, what is your priority for the next four weeks? And what do you think maybe on the back of that other people's priority should be in their business when it comes to supercharging your online brand? What should people's priority be for the next four weeks, Tudor? So for me is uh, we're a startup, right? So what we, what we want to prove is that our product to to grow our uh... clearly the internet has had enough of us it's cutting us off at 102 um <laughs> that's annoying i wanted to get that answer from you as well um yeah you've frozen it's happened again um bandwidth and all of that guys um by the look of it um, but look, um, I will look to wrap up now. Um, I will, uh, let's get Speechify's um, URL up here for you guys. Um, and as I said, I would love to connect with everybody. I'd say this on every webinar, um, online afterwards. Um, and I posted up my LinkedIn profile there. So please connect with me afterwards waiting for Tudor to reconnect i'm just going to see if i can get him up for those of you who are still on of which there are a, a number of you um <laughs> he's back <laughs> internet problems again <laughs> it's had enough of us clearly it's kicking us out at 103. Um, um, but yeah what, what, what about focusing on for the next four weeks let's finish up with that so uh for us our main objective is to bring our revenue up yeah uh the reason why we're doing this is because we want to prove uh, to investors and to ourselves, you know, most tech companies take a lot of investment and then at some point they want to want to reach cash positive. We want to do that as soon as possible because we have a product that is already amazing and that people can use and we're focusing on, on bringing ourselves up first. Uh, I've had two objectives in the, this last two months. Uh, one is to make sure we have a comfortable runway and to provide stability to every member of our team because if they feel stable and they know they have 
a, a stable company to work for, they will be more motivated, more productive. And second one, based on that, to actually for us to increase our sales and to prove that we are a robust business based on the numbers. So these are the two the two main uh, objectives that we've had. Because when this crisis started, we we had uh, uh, we had a runway for normal times, right? Mm -hmm. Which made us vulnerable because we're a startup. But now we're looking to we're looking to actually turn those into an advantage. So the last month and a bit, we've moved, we've transformed Speechify a lot because we had the stimulus to do so. If this hadn't happened, I'm not sure if we'd have, we would have moved that quickly. Yes, yeah, interesting, isn't it? And I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm the same. I've, I've, I've taken the time to do that and I'm looking, I'm, you know, launching a new website next week. And this has accelerated my plans to do that because I'm, you know, changing, bringing more products online because uh, I used to be going up to London two, three times a week. Um, and it's a different way of doing business now. It's doing it in a different way of doing business. Um, yeah, maybe you could pop up the URL for, for Speechify or your sure. personal connection. Uh, and yeah. here's something to think about for us to end on, Tudor. Um, if you had a million pounds to invest in an industry today, what would it be? Uh, I, I would I would invest it in Speechify. <laughs> hey, great answer. <laughs> Uh, I mean, so our our vision is to to give people a voice, uh, and I believe that artificial intelligence can play a role in making people express themselves better and in helping people express themselves more easily. Uh, I am an optimist, and I believe technology can solve a lot of the world's problems if it's used in the right way. Uh, and I think that investing money in technologies that can shell help shape and build the future uh, is, a, is a great thing to do. Uh, there's personally industries that I, I love aside from what we do. I think that investing in solutions for climate change is really important. We've seen how pollution has gone down now and we we're actually realizing how yeah. much of an impact our travel habits had on the planet. Uh, so I would, I would invest money in uh, uh, in uh, in solutions to to climate change, for instance, to clean water, yeah, and yeah. to probably fighting pandemics. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, there you go. There's an industry. Uh, <laughs> Bill Gates is Bill Gates is lead on that one. Yeah. Um, excellent. Um, yeah. Apologies for taking out more of your time, Tudor. It, but um, well, it's really enjoyable. Thanks so much for being such a great host. I pleasure. Always a pleasure. And um, yeah, let's catch up again uh, in the next week or so, something like that, um, and, and maybe get you guys on again. And I think we're looking at now two weeks is our next spot, like 5th of May onwards, because it's a bank holiday Monday here in the UK on uh, the 4th, I think. Um, so then we're looking to schedule more webinars. So those of you still on next webinars are going to be from Monday morning at 10 a.m., my friend Ryan England is uh, is on then, but we've got three webinars a day, five days a week. Um, hope you've enjoyed having Tudor uh, on from Speechify and all of the webinars that we've hosted this week. You can go back and watch these on the replay. They're both on the Crowdcast program, but we've also got a YouTube channel for the Festival of Enterprise where you can watch uh, everything on there. So again, invite people that you think would find value from listening to Tudor here to, to watch the replay back. I watched the one at 10 a.m. We've already had 20% of people go back and, and you know, uh, new people go and watch that replay. So people are diving in and watching it. So, um, yeah, thank you, Tudor, very much indeed. Thank you so for your much, time. Alex. And Appreciate everyone, you. hope you stay safe and stay positive. Yeah, likewise. Thank you for getting that. And, yeah, stay safe, stay positive, everybody. Uh, enjoy the weekend. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, okay, everybody else, Magdalena, everybody else who's uh, who's been on, Julia. Um, as well, everybody who's posted up. Thank you for taking part.